in the, in the early days when we started out, a lot of our kind of early gigs were, um, did have a little bit more kind of a dance influence and kind of were kind of uh, parties of sort. They weren't too dissimilar to kind of the reaction you get at a club. You know, a lot of people kind of hands in the air, dancing away. I DJed in Italy actually, I played this one track and a guy came up to the DJ booth and just did that to my face for the duration of the track. <laughs> So I thought, all right, next I'll play some Michael Jackson. What were we playing Michael before Jackson. that? I can't remember what it was. It was something a little Noise. bit, a little bit doomy. And then I thought, I'll play some Michael Jackson. He's got to love that. And he just stayed there, still doing it. <laughs> Um, your, your most recent single uh, was a cover of the mid 90s pop hit, Not Over Yet. Um, was that period of music, I guess, a, a time that you guys found particularly influential, or is it just a bit of a fun that you've been having with it? I think it was, it, you know, it was uh, very interesting in that period, but just as much any other period in, you know, in music. Um, but mainly that song, it was, just, it was just that song kind of stood out. It, it was um, the track, whether you like dance music or not, it was kind of. Um, crossed over and was and we just thought it was a really good pop song really with strong melodies and um, a song that we thought we could rework. Um, it's a hard one, it's a big one. Sad song. When we made the record, I think it was, it's funny because it was um, we made the record at the same time that the, the Mercury Prize was on TV, the last year's Mercury Prize. And um, I think we were watching it and we just thought we wanted to be there, we wanted to be there at the Mercury's and we wanted the album to you know, compete and contend, and we thought we had a, a good chance of doing that. You know, we thought we made a, a strong record. And um, I don't know. Beforehand, we were—I think we went up to the room just minutes before the um, the winner was revealed, and we—I think we were quietly confident. But but you never know those kind of things. You know, anything can happen. Um, I guess as well as the award and you know the recognition that comes with it, you get the cash. Price, yeah, what's, yeah. What's you, get, you get 20 grand, um, 20,000 pounds, which um, Simon got the cheque and stuck it on the wall and we all forgot about it for about a month. And then only the other day I think Simon found it and, and banked it. And, but that money we're going to put, we want to do something, we haven't thought what we want to do with it yet, but we want to do something, build something or create something that will that will last. We've got a few ideas about and a few things. And, but I think it all I think it all just naturally sound will naturally come and evolve. You know, we've got ideas who we want to work with and that's all penciled in. We're going in with a session for a session with this guy called Focus who's part of Aftermath. Um, and also um, Tony Visconti, who's produced all the great like, Bowie albums. And also James Ford, which we'll probably be doing to evolve the record with. Um, and we we're gonna see I mean I think we're trying to get away from synthesizers and away from um, maybe fake sounds, you know, away from the synthesized sounds. It just seems like everyone's doing that at the moment. And, um, I think the latest thing we were saying is no no electricity, no no plugs on the next record. Folky. Folk frog. <laughs> you know, Sydney last night was, yeah. was great. But also like this, you know, Perth was, was great in Adelaide. And um, no, we've been kind of um, overwhelmed by the reception over here. It's great to be here really, you know, yeah. doing it. Um, just finally, you know, you've been tied so closely to the whole uh, new rave term, and I'm sure you're absolutely sick of talking about it and like, every single interview no doubt would ask you about it. But I read a really interesting explanation of the whole situation that they they said it was a Nathan Barley style joke, and I've, I've watched a few of the Nathan that's Barley. That's a Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it, someone needs to just go and radically change all that Wikipedia. I've seen it, and it, it's just offensive. It's all half truths and kind of like. It's just that it's the, the, everyone gets all their information from it and it's not, it's not right. That and our biography both need to go. They're, they're selling lies. lies. <laughs> they're selling lies. <laughs>